Uh, next we have a joint pack. Okay. Uh, we have Mercury Horizon and Jekyll. Now Mercury Horizon, uh, Bruce Willis and Alan Walker, absolutely fantastic. Um, it's uh, one of his good, one of his good movies, uh, Bruce Willis nineties movies. Uh, I love the situation. I like the idea of like the government going too far, and uh, you know, a person knowing too much, and they would you know go to extreme and you know try and kill, and even kill, try and kill, kill a kid. I like the idea of that, and I think it pushes the boundaries of like what you know what the government could do, and maybe you know how far we would go, kind of thing. And uh, some people didn't like it because of that, and they felt some sort of people felt it was uncomfortable because of the actual kid um, in the actual movie. Um, with his condition, but um, no, I thought actually it was really, really good. I think it was interesting to, to do that, and I think it was a good, smart decision to do that. You know, it's just you know you shouldn't you know be you know uh, you know uh, uncomfortable watching that. It's you know it, it has it has happened. These, these things you know are, are are reality. You know, and there is there is a unfortunately some people there's conditions, and it's it's a real shame, and I think it's really really sad. And uh, but um. The movie, I think, does a really fantastic job. I think Bruce Willis is really fantastic, and he, the way he deals with it, and you know, I think there's a great, great chemistry, you know, between those two characters as well. And like, yeah, there's a bit of a, at the end of the movie, there's a bit of like a trust, there's a bit of like an actual kind of um, link between those two characters, and uh, they kind of make each other better people and all that stuff. I, I like that, and it's got some really good action scenes and with some ideas. It's, it's kind of like um, a, Enemy of the State a little bit, some of the ideas behind that, and. Uh, yeah, it's, it's Bruce Willis, so it's really fantastic. So, I, I, I recommend it. I recommend it. It's a bit underrated in some areas. Alec Baldwin's a really great villain uh, as well, and, and he's one of his one of his early work as well, so it's good good to check out, see, see what you think. Uh, the second one is uh, The Jekyll. That's with uh, Richard Gere in as well. Uh, the Jekyll, um, he's... Bruce Willis is a, ba a baddie. This one, he's, a, he's a professional kind of hitman, assassin, whatever you want to call it. Well, known as the Jekyll, and Richard Gere um, has got a bit of a personal vendetta against him. He's a bit of a confrontation, and it's it's a it's a really interesting, really intense movie, and it's got some really personal issues and stuff in it. You know, and they kind of they kind of bring Richard Gere his character into um, out of prison because they know who he is. They've seen him in real life, and uh, they need his kind of they need to know you know what's what happened, and they need to know you know. Uh, how do we stop him? Because he's actually the best, of the best, and I, I like that, and it's really fantastic. And I think Bruce Willis is a really fantastic buddy, and that he's he barely says anything for a little while in most of the movies. I think he's just he's so professional, so badass. He doesn't need to say anything. He just looks at you, and you're dead. Uh, Jet Black's in it as well. He's one of his early cameo type movies in it as well, and uh, it's got a really good cast. It's got a really great storyline as well. And there's some really great action scenes, and there's some really great um, emotional type scenes as well, and. Uh, yeah, I think it's definitely worthwhile watching um, if you're interested in a good action movie with a kind of emotional kind of vibe as well, some some personal kind of storyline. And the actual one of the main twists in it is actually really sad, really shocking. It's like, whoa, okay, this is this movie just got a little deeper kind of thing in it. And so yeah, check out the Jack on. I recommend it. Next we have Assassins, with Sylvester Snow. Uh, another good uh, kind of. Uh, well, it's obviously a movie about a bunch of assassins. Really fantastic uh, kind of concept and like the idea about uh, so there's like a list of assassins out there, like you know number one and all that stuff. And uh, I like the idea about it and this kind of a conspiracy as well. You know, uh, Sylvester Stallone's character is uh, basically retiring from assassins now. He's just kind of given up. He doesn't want to do it anymore. He's he's killed enough people in his time, and he just he wants to give up. The, he wants to give it up. You know. He's become number one. He has, you know, gone to his crown, and he's his time, you know, and he, just, he, just, he has to do one last kind of mission, and of course things go south, and as they do, and he, he gets confrontation with another assassin, uh, and uh, yeah, he's he, he's number two. He wants to be number one, and uh, I like the idea of that, and they kind of, you know, kind of um, play off each other kind of thing, and being the, because they're two experts at the same time, they're both, you know, awesome, and they both know what they're doing, and. I like that for the entire movie, they kind of they're, they're enemies and then they're kind of friends and they're enemies again kind of thing. I, I like that kind of mix and yeah, it's really it's a really good really good, good storyline. I like the twist at the end as well, that's really good and uh, it's it's a really great action movie, really, really great uh, thriller as well, got good storyline and uh, yeah, some really dramatic type of uh, tension between those two characters and uh, 
Yeah, I definitely like Command Assassins. It's got a really good storyline. It's got some really good acting and really good, good concept. Can't have it really. Next we have uh, Lucky uh, Number Seven. This is the uh, Fantastic cast: uh, Morton Freeman, uh, uh, Bruce Willis, you know, etc., etc., kind of thing. Uh, really fantastic uh, setup. I love the cinematography. I like the storyline. I like the script. I like the soundtrack. I like the idea about it. I like the twist. Which is really fantastic as well. Um, I really, I really enjoy the whole movie from start to finish. Really stylish, really funny, really clever, and um, it's, it's got some, it's got some dark comedy scenes in it as well, which is really, really great. And uh, it's, it's cool. It's really cool to watch. It's got a great, great it's got a good thriller type storyline. It does things in different ways. It's like, it's like flashbacks. It has kind of like, uh, you know, you know, interpretation type scenes as well. And it's got some really great, interesting dialogue in it as well. And it's, it's a situation type movie as well. Bruce Willis is really great as well, and so is the rest of the cast. It's, it's, it's it really is a, a good movie to watch, and I think anyone who will watch it really will enjoy it. Um, I, I, I recommend you see what you think. Just give it a watch, and if you're not that keen, then well, you're not. It's not for everyone, I suppose, but I think it is a really enjoyable movie, and I think you will like the twists, and you know, it's great stuff. Good stuff. Uh, next, we have Hitman with uh, Timothy Alton. This is the uh, Extreme Edition. <laughs> yeah, uh, basically this is the extended cut of the actual movie compared to the cinema version, which is a lot better. A lot, of, a lot of more extended stuff in it makes the movie better. Now, the reason I like this movie is because of two reasons. One, Tim Fjolman. Tim Fjolman is a fantastic actor. I love anything he does within any movie, TV show, movies, whatever. I watch it because he's a really gifted actor and I love his work. He's so underrated and I think he deserves some awards by now, to be honest. He's, he's so unbelievably underrated. Um, second, I played the Hitman games. I've played all of them from the very first, or, uh, from the very second one. I didn't play the original on PC. I played from Silent Assassin all the way on to from the Blood Money, and I'm looking forward to Hitman Absolution as well. That's going to be really fantastic. Um, the Hitman, uh, the movie, I think, uh, tributes the games, and I think it works really, really well. It, it pays off a lot of. Uh, uh, just some of the same ideas. It, cha it changes the storyline a little bit from the actual game main storyline, but I think it works as an actual movie. It has some of the, a lot of the same elements, has a lot of the same ideas and stuff, and I think it works as an actual movie. Um, I think it could have been so much better if 20th Century Fox didn't you know, fuck it up a bit more. They were messing with that movie so much, they were basically re editing the director's work. He had a certain way of doing the movie, and 20th Century Fox didn't like the easy way of doing it, so they kind of re edited as he was editing his version, so yeah, that's, so that's why probably a lot of people didn't like it or we just felt it just didn't work or something. I actually liked it for what it was, you know, even it could have been more, I think, if they would have left it alone. But um, yeah, I, I really enjoy it, man. I think he stays true to the games and I like Tim McFarland and I like the ideas, and I think the storyline is actually pretty decent and it's pretty good, pretty clever. They are working on Hitman 2, that's in pre production at the moment, so they have some ideas and all that stuff, so I'm looking forward to that and I hope. 20th Century Fox kind of just lets it, you know, be a 418 or something, just leaves it alone kind of thing. That'd be fun. I think that'd be really fantastic. So yeah, Hitman. Uh, next we have uh, Leah. This is the uh, director's cut. I also have the theatrical version. Which, uh, yeah. Put them on two so, yeah. Theatrical, director's cut. Uh, director's cut is a lot, a lot, a lot, lot, lot better. It like, adds those extra cool, actual scenes in it, which makes obviously the film a bit more as a whole and those scenes actually do add in a lot more and I think they are better. Uh, sl slightly different kind of alternative takes and slightly different alternative little bits in certain places and I think it works as an overall better movie. I think the movie itself is really fantastic, really stylish, stylistic cinematography wise and fantastic and he portrays this kind of Leon, this character, this hitman, professional hitman, or the professional is now in America, that's what it's called, and uh, portray his character is really fantastic, and the actor who does him is amazing, um, it's one of the Natalie Portman's uh, very, very first work, uh, acting work, and she's, for, <laughs> she's kind of the character from uh, Kick-Ass, you know, and uh, yeah, she's really, she swears, she kind of smokes, she drinks kind of thing, and she's she wants to be a killer like him and all that stuff, and they have a, they have a good chemistry about it, and they have a really good... Uh, overall story. She it is a bit of a revenge story on as well, kind of thing, because her family's been killed by uh, Gary Oldman, his character, which is a, his character is really fantastic. He, he kind of betrays the same kind of character he does in uh, uh, True Romance and uh, and a State of Grace type of character. You know, there's that kind of uh, crooked, you know, kind of crooked cop type of character. 
you know, a bit of the psychopath edge. I kind of like that. Uh, the extras are really fantastic as well. They talk about uh, you know, 10 years on as the movie been on since then, just some of the DVD releases, you know, and stuff. And I think um, they talk about the director and the actor actors and what they think about it and all that stuff. And yeah, it's really fantastic. It's some really good actors, really good uh, stuff about it. I like, I like the DVD menu system as well, it's quite cool. And uh, there's been there's been no talk of a, of a, of a sequel or anything, you know, where I should you know, Portman being an assassin, you know, so the movie. I think it would be really, really fantastic if they actually did it. I think um, it would pay tribute to the first one, and I think it'd be interesting. If they do it well, you should have the same director, maybe, and the same, have a really solid, good script. I think it'd be very, really fantastic. And to be honest, to see kind of, you know, who she is after those events, but I don't know, we'll, we'll see what happens, really. But uh, Leon, fantastic. Next we have The Magician. Uh, this is an Australian independent movie. This this is uh, I actually really really enjoyed this movie. This is unbelievably uh, interesting. Uh, cinematography was fantastic. Camera was fantastic. It's kind of like a mockumentary type thing. Uh, basically, his friend um, is basically filming this hitman. Um, you know, and uh, following around how he does things and how he kind of you know. Uh, Kidnaps people and how he talks to people, reacts to people, and his his character is actually really funny and really uh, relatable. And it's, it's 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 interesting to see. And like um, he kind of does like these video diaries with him, and like just his thoughts about like you know certain things about like war, politics, and uh, religion, and all that stuff. And it's really interesting for a hitman. It's really depth from inside, and it's, for a point of view movie, it's really fantastic. You know, and I love, love the opening like. He goes to the camera and goes, like, yeah, I'm going to give him, I'm going to give him the good news, yeah. Because, and then just basically shoots, shoots, put two bullets into him within the opening sequence. I think it's really funny and it's just witty and it's good. It's got a good charm to it and, and I like his character and I, I like the story and overall and I think it's just great. It's got some really dark humor and um, it's, it's something that I really appreciate because I, I, I do short films myself and I do uh, uh, independent type stuff. Um, and I really liked the way he did it, and he basically he directed, wrote it, and starred in it. This movie, this is a personal project for him. There's a lot of scenes where he talks about in the extras that he actually directed it himself, and certain scenes actually moved the camera in certain bits and reacted to certain ways because most of it was improv, but some of it was scripted in some sense. And some shots he managed to get once, just once, you know, out of the blue kind of thing, just at the spur of the moment. Um, I really enjoyed it ever since I watched this. It. It's, it's got some really comic hype. Probably to it. it's, got, it's got a good storyline overall, and it's got a really good uh, feel to it. His character is really, really funny, and it's a good tone to it. And I recommend watching it. I think it is a really good movie, and uh, yeah, I think I think it's got a good standpoint on on, on on like individual type of you know independent movies. I think it's worth watching for sure. It's got it's got like a little bit of a Leon type feel, I suppose, to it. You know, similar type of character. But, uh, yeah, absolutely fantastic. Really enjoyed it, and we based upon our uh, our short movie, a straight talk upon that uh, movie as well. I'm trying to keep the same kind of style to it, so that's one of the reasons for it. Yep. Um, next we have Clavel. We have the Tudor Special Edition. Michael Mann, uh, Jamie Fox, and uh, Tom Cruise. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, yet again, uh, another fantastic cinematography, fantastic soundtrack, fantastic acting, fantastic. <laughs> script. Oh my god, I'm just brilliant. It's really, really brilliant. For her. Again, it's another emotional type of hitman. You know, these two characters kind of come together one night and Tom Cruise is a hitman. He's professional and he has a certain, he has a, a certain view and Jimmy Fox has a diff different view about it. And Jimmy Fox is really fantastic for an act, for, for, a, for a singer and a comedian, you know, and going into acting. He's really gifted and really natural about it and he's really fantastic and they kind of play off each other beautifully and you know, there's some really great moments and really great kind of visuals and as well into the scenes and the whole, you know, the whole city and all that and the story arc, story arc that he tells is really fantastic also and I think Tom Cruise is a really, really gifted actor also, he's really fantastic in this role and there's a lot of great scenes as well, there's a lot of, a lot of the stories that he tells and like um, how he portrays life and how he justifies what he does and all, I, I, like that, I like that. It's also got a cameo appearance from uh, Jathan Stapler, uh, Jathan Stephen, Stephen Ham, I think, I can't say his name properly. Yeah, he's, 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 he's a cameo appearance in that, he's you know, in that movie, but uh, yeah, pretty really fantastic. Michael Mann again, really again, fantastic. Okay. So, uh, moving on, we have uh, Wanted. This is the uh, kind of limited edition set, this is the, the outer serial case, the uh, comic, the uh, limited edition comic. 
I got it. Good stuff. Really good looking edition comic. I read, I read this is actually is, that's really that's really really well to the actual uh, because the actual movie is based upon an actual comic. So uh, that's an actual um, I think half of the actual uh, main graphic novel comic. So actually it's really really interesting read and it stays true. I think. Uh, Add on to the actual movie is, itself, so I, I like the comic. It's a good, actually, good actually, extra feature to it. Um, this is a, I think, actually, a really enjoyable movie. I had actually no problems in the slightest. I think it was well acted. Yeah, it stays true to the comic from what I've read so far, and Mort is great. I think the acting's great. I mean, uh, Angelina Joe is fantastic, and it's got some, it's got some really great ideas. I really like it. It's I like the slow motion stuff, like the action scenes, I like this, the extra style powers and the attitude and the kind of like the fuck you kind of thing. And I love the keyboards and this character and all that. And it's really great. It's just great. I love the fact that he kind of smashes his friend's face in with a keyboard and just goes like fuck you. That's great. It's, it's got some really great um, type of uh, uh, dialogue and uh, scenes and stuff in it. It's, it looks brilliant. It looks really fantastic. And this storyline, I think, is it's good stuff. Uh, it's enjoyable. It's, it's, it's a very enjoyable action movie from start to finish, you know, and uh, it is what it is kind of thing. And I think if you if you like a bit of an if you like an adult violence type of action movie with a good twist as well, it's got a good twist. Then I think Wanted might be for you. Um, I definitely want to get the Blu-ray edition because it's got all the extras, and I think it's going to look absolutely amazing on Blu-ray. Uh, I think I will purchase that. I've seen it for like a fiver, and I think, shit, I could have actually bought that. In fairness, I think I will at some point, but um, I will be keeping the comic because the comic's a nice little added feature, and I like the other casing. So I don't know. I might give it to someone, maybe. I, I don't know. I'm not sure yet. Anyway, yeah, wanted. That's a good, really good movie. I'm going to check that out. Uh, next, we have Mission Impossible. <coughs> we have the Tudor Special Edition. Of the first one, uh, re-release edition, really fantastic movie. Tom Cruise, I don't, I don't say too much about it. Um, good action scenes, good music. Tom Cruise, one of his early '90s movies. I think it's really great. It's, it's a really great kind of spy movie. Really great kind of ideas, and he's on the run kind of thing. And <clears throat> again, got some good twists and that. Based upon like a TV series as well. You know, it, it birthed a lot of these classic kind of scenes, like you know, the uh, him going down from the ceiling kind of thing. It's spied from that. All, all these parodies, all these other movies, you know, copying that. Just it's just, it's just really great. It's a throwaway from start to finish. You know, it's got some great characters that you remember forever. And <clears throat> yeah, I really enjoyed it. It it stays true, I think, to the TV series. I think a lot of people compared it to the TV series, and I think they liked it. And you know, it, it works really, really well. So. Mission Impossible, I think is really fantastic, really enjoyable. I have no problem with it in the slightest. We happy to have the extras and stuff. Not an audition. Next we have <coughs> Mission Impossible 3. Now I don't have the second one uh, because I don't like the second one. Uh, the thing is, uh, Mission Impossible 2 was directed by John Woo. Now, which you may know is an over-the-top action director. He's good at most of his movies, but that movie felt so. It didn't feel like a Mission Impossible movie. It felt like an over-the-top, unfinished movie, and it didn't work for me. It really did not work. And it, I mean, the, po the point is, a Mission Impossible movies. They are team-based movies. It is Tom Cruise and him and the team, you know, going after certain things. And it didn't feel like a team movie at all in the second one. It, it felt just out of place, and it didn't feel right at all. And it's just, a, it was a very unusual sequel. And. Um, so yeah, the second one I just don't I, I don't enjoy watching to be honest. I think it's just too much and it's just there's a lot of scenes which I don't, I don't really buy or anything. I just I don't know. I don't know. I, I just I don't like the second one at all. I, I don't want it in my collection and I'm happy with just the first and the third one. So speaking of the third one, of course, we have of course Mission Impossible. So the two special edition. Uh, third one I think was it is it is one of the best in the series. It, it, I think it's it must be my second favourite. Uh, no, I think yeah, it, it, it is my second favorite out of the uh, Mission Impossible movies. Uh, really fantastic kind of uh, sequel add on to it, and he just continues his character as you know being Tom Cruise and all that stuff. And he's gonna get he's getting married in this one. He's got he's got like a girlfriend, and he's, he's planning on getting married. And it just shows him a different light. And again, he's kind of on the run in, in certain sections. And the the actual action scenes, the actual scope of it is like much larger and bigger. And he just does more and. Yeah, I think it feels a bit more uh, realistic than the other ones. That the first one did, I think, in certain, certain death scenes and certain action scenes and fight scenes and stuff. 
and it pushes Tom Cruise's acting to another whole new limit and it's really fantastic and the actors are really fantastic as well. Um, Lawrence Fishburg, you know, talks about, you know, the extras and uh, the making of it on sets and just, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, how they do the action scenes and stuff. It's good stuff, really good stuff. I like, that. I like this movie a lot. Mission Impossible for it. Very enjoyable. Um, I haven't got Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol yet. I will be getting it and I do want it in my collection. That is very, very enjoyable and I did like that a lot as well. And, uh, yeah, I definitely do want that. I want, I'll probably, probably going to get the Blu-ray tool pack at some point. So, yeah, uh, next time uh, I'll probably do an update, it'll probably be in between there, probably. But uh, I haven't got around to getting it yet. So, yeah. <laughs>